Hello friends, in this video we're gonna create the background star effect that you see here. In the end we're gonna have a result that looks like this. We have three levels of particle emitters creating this cool looking parallax star field effect. Let's get started. Before we create the particle effects we're gonna do some bug fixing. The way we were respawning the player is actually problematic. Here's the deal. If the player dies in front of an asteroid and that asteroid is moving towards the player. So let's say the player died here. The asteroid touched it and the player died. When the player respawns, let's say the asteroid moved up until here. So when the player is gonna respawn, the asteroid is still above the death location of the player. This was resulting in the player getting killed twice. Let me show this to you quickly. I'm gonna bring the player back and run the game. Now if I, let me get a better start. Now if I go in front of this asteroid and die, you can see that we just died twice. So how do we fix this? We need to go back to the player script and inside of here we're gonna change a couple of things. First of all, as you can see, I stopped using the process mode property. So before we were using process mode and we were setting this to disabled and then back to inherit. This was causing us problems. I tried to make it work with this, but in the end, I wasn't able to find a good solution. So I decided not to use this. What I ended up doing was using the collision shapes disabled property. So first, you need to create a reference to the collision shape up here. Next, we are going to set the disabled property to true when the player dies. And when we respawn the player, we're gonna set it back to false. So when the player dies, the collision shape is disabled so that we don't do any collisions. And when the player respawns, we're gonna set it back to be enabled essentially by setting disabled to false. I'm using set deferred here because that's what the documentation tells you to use. But other than that, this is simply setting a property to true and false. But this alone will actually not work. We need to do a few more things. The first thing is to stop the physics process and the process function from executing if the player isn't alive. So we don't want the player to move when the player is dead. So at the top here, we're just going to say, if not alive, just return. Just do not do any of this stuff. Same for the process. You don't want to execute any of this if the player is not alive. And the final piece in this puzzle is in the game script. So let's go there. Inside the player died function here, we want to set the position of the player to the position of the spawn position. We were doing this actually inside of the respawn function here. We were passing the spawn position and inside of the player script we are still actually setting our global position to that but that wasn't enough we actually need to set it to the spawn position immediately when the player dies which is what we're doing here so when you bring all of these things together the buggy behavior is essentially gone so let's give this a try okay i'm gonna try to die in front of Maybe not this because there was an asteroid about to enter the spawn zone. Okay, this looks better. Now, as you can see, we didn't die twice. And if you, you know, paid attention to the collision shape, it was immediately teleported to the spawn area. So let's give this another shot. As you can see, it is working. And we also can't move. Even if I try to move when I'm dead, I can't. Okay, so that is the solution to the bug. Now we're gonna create the star field effect. To do this, we're gonna use the particle system of Godot. Let's create a new node here, which is going to be the GPU particles 2D. We're gonna rename this to be star field back. So to create a parallax effect, we're gonna create three different particle emitters. The first one will be the one in the back, and then we're gonna have the one in the middle and the front. 
So because this will be in the back, I want this to be behind everything else. So I'm going to set its Z index to be negative 100. Next, I'm going to create a process material for this from the inspector here. This is going to be a particle process material. And as soon as I create that, you can see that the emitter starts emitting particles. Now, we don't want this to be on the origin here. We want this to be at the right side of the game scene here. So I'm going to move it to 1280 by 360 so that it is on the center, on the height, and at the right edge. And we're going to move it towards the right just a little. Now we can start fiddling with the particle system. OK, so first of all, the particles are going down. We don't want that. That means there's gravity being applied to them. So let's take a look at the material, click on it. And here we have a tab for gravity. We want to go here and set the gravity to be zero. This will make it so that the particles are being emitted from a single point and they're not moving. We're going to change that. We're going to make it so that particles are emitted on this line here on the Y axis. We want particles to be emitted starting from zero until the end of the screen here. And that has to do with the emission shape. So we're going to set the emission shape to a box instead of a point. And this box has extents. We are basically going to use this box like a line. We're going to leave the X extent as one. And we're going to set the Y extent to be 360, which is half the screen height. And this will make it so that particles are emitted 360 pixels above the emitter and 360 pixels below the emitter, covering the whole 720 pixels of the screen height. And you can see that, that particles are being emitted on that line. But we don't have enough of them to really see this effect. So I'm going to bump up the amount from 8 to 1,000. Now you can fully see that we have particles being emitted from zero up until 720. OK, good. Next step is to give these some velocity so that they move towards the left side of the screen. We're going to do that from the initial velocity tab here. And we don't want these to move fast because they're going to be, you know, really far away in the distance. So their movement is going to be very subtle. So we're going to give this a velocity of negative 10 for the min and the max. But you can see that currently the particles are not living for a very long time. They're being emitted and in a very short amount of time they're getting deleted. So to fix this we're going to go inside the time tab. And it is not the one that is inside the material here. It is the one that is underneath the material. And from here, we can set a lifetime. And this determines how many seconds the particle exists. Currently, it's set to one second. That is why we have this effect of the particle being deleted in a second. So we're going to set this to 140. And immediately, you can see the particles are not being deleted. And if you watch them and time them, you will see that after 140 seconds, they will get deleted. But now the problem is, uh, if we run the game now, actually, you will see that we don't have any particles at the start. After a while, they start to come in. But we don't want to wait while we play the game to particles to fill the whole screen. We want to pre-process the particles. That is what this pre-process property does. Particle system starts as if it had already run for this many seconds. So this is basically going to calculate the particles for the amount of seconds we give this. And we're going to give this to be, let's say, 280 maybe. And to see the effect of this, I'm going to switch to the player scene and come back to the game scene. And that way, the pre-processing takes effect. And we can see that uh, the particles have made their way all the way to the end of the screen here, which is good, which is what we want. But we have some particles going up and down. And I don't want that. I, wa I want them to go from right to left in a straight line. So I'm going to go inside the direction here and set the spread to be 0. 
this is a personal preference. You can play with these yourself and create an effect that you like. For me, I don't like them going up and down. I want them to go right to left straight. So this way, we don't have any particles above or below the screen. Now this looks good actually. Now we just need to create two more star fields and uh, change some of their properties to make them, you know, differ. Okay, let's save this and I'm going to create a parent node for these. And this is going to be the background star fields. And we're going to make our star field a child of this and we can put this at the top here. So now we can create the middle one. So I'm going to duplicate this, rename it to be star field middle. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of the back one so that we can focus on this one first. And then I'm going to make the process material unique. This is very important. You need to right click on the material and click on make unique. Otherwise, because we duplicated them, the changes we make to the middle material will also affect the back. Okay, now that we did that, the first thing that I'm going to change is the amount. I'm going to make this 250. So this middle field will be much closer to the player. So we don't want as many stars in this one. We're also going to make the stars bigger because it is closer to the player. This is all for the parallax effect that we're trying to achieve. So let's go inside the material here and we're going to set the scale to be, hmm, let's see, maybe two. Let's try three. Okay, as you can see, it is much bigger than the backfield. So this is the second change we wanted to make. Let's save that. And we also want these to be faster because they're closer to the player. So their movements are more, you know, fast from our perspective. So let's go to the initial velocity and let's set this to be negative 20. So that is going to make them faster. And I think that is all. We don't want to make too many changes here. Ah, yes, we also should change the Z index just so, you know, we are rendering them in the correct order. So the back one is negative 100. This one's going to be, let's say, negative 95 so that it is rendered above the back star field. And I think this should be good like this. Let's see them together in action. We can run the game. And as you can see, the back star field is much smaller, moves slower. And the middle star field looks like it is above, you know, uh, much closer to the player because it is moving faster and it's bigger. Okay, and finally, we're going to create the front star field. So let's duplicate the middle one. Let's not forget to make the material unique. And I'm going to turn these guys off, rename this one to the front. Okay, and for this one, we're not going to have that many particles. Let's maybe set it to 25, maybe 35. Yeah, this looks good because we're going to set the scale of this to be five. So it is much, much bigger. Five might be too big, but we're not going to have that many of them. So maybe let's say 30 of these and scale five. And we're actually going to make this faster as well. So let's set the velocity to be negative 30. So, OK. And this will be the last one. Let's also not forget to set the Z index, which will be negative 90. Okay. So we can see what they look like together. And I think this is the effect that we want. Feel free to adjust these to your liking. This isn't perfect. I don't want to get too deep into, you know, fiddling with the particle options that we have here. We have a ton. We didn't even use, you know, uh, too many of them here, honestly. If I was actually going to make this for a, you know, like a serious game project, I would spend a lot of time on this. You know, I would try out almost all of these to see what they look like. But again, I'm not going to do that in this tutorial because it's just going to be too long. 
but I encourage you to do that on your own, create a cool effect. It is very fun to play with particles. Okay, I think that is going to be it for this video and the tutorial series. This was the final thing I wanted to add to our game. And now we have a complete asteroid style game. We have a cool looking background parallax effect. We have meteors or asteroids floating around. We can shoot them, we get points, and we also die when we hit them. And we have a clever spawning system in place. I really encourage you to take this game and implement something on your own, add new features, create more levels. The best way to learn is to practice. You're gonna get much, much better at programming and game development if you practice on your own. It is the best way to learn. So I really encourage you to take this as a base and build something of your own. I would love to see it if you end up creating something. Please share it with me, I would love that. If you like the series, if you learned something new, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn more about Godot, I have a course for beginners that I go from zero to an advanced level of information. So if you want to learn Godot and if you're a beginner, check out my course. There's a link in the description and in this video. Thanks again guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.